So for this video, I wanted to bring you with us because we're about to pack this stuff up here and actually go to a new campus that's starting at our church. We're gonna put the finishing touches on our sound system and uh, our pro presenter setup. And I kind of wanted to take this opportunity to talk a little bit about what I think might be the best pro presenter seven setup and the most affordable one uh, that you can do in 2021. So with that being said, let's pack up and get into it. The best AHA flavor. All right, so we just got here after stopping for coffee and lunch, had to get both. Um, we're now ready to uh, start setting things up. We just pulled things in. All right, so there are a couple things that make this setup, I think, pretty great for the price. You know, I've looked around at a couple different options and stuff, and I really don't think you could get this stuff any cheaper um, than what we got uh, right here. So first off, the thing that makes this all work, the new uh, MacBook Air M1. Um, these things are crazy. Either the Mac Minis or the MacBook Airs. Honestly, both of them, either one would work. They work so well for so many things. ProPresenter works flawlessly as well for a lot of other programs. The only thing these can't do yet is Dante. We're waiting on Audinate to get their game together and put out an update for Dante uh, for these new M1 Macs. Um, other than that, they work great. Right now for the way that these M1 Macs work, there are a couple things you need to get to kind of work around some of its limitations. Its biggest limitation is that it only allows for two total displays. So this means for the, for the laptop, it means one display that is the laptop display and then one extra display. But we actually need three total displays, the laptop display, um, one, display for up front, our audience screen, and one for our confidence monitor or stage screen. So the way to get around this is actually using this little guy right here, the Ultra Studio uh, Monitor 3G from Blackmagic. This works great, you plug it in. You have to get a Thunderbolt 3 cable, not a USB-C, Thunderbolt 3, has to be Thunderbolt 3 to plug it in to work with that. But then you run into another problem where that takes up one of the two ports on the laptop. So then that's where this CalDigit Thunderbolt dock comes in. This thing plugs into the computer and then it actually powers the computer too. So it charges it and then you have USB, uh, USB-C, you have uh, Ethernet, Cat5 in, all kinds of stuff, SD cards, headphone jacks, everything. So this will work great for anything else that we need to plug into the computer. And then the last little piece we have back here is just an SDI splitter. So we just ended up going with this instead of uh, a Decklink Duo or something like that or building you know, one of those PCIe uh, boxes to run multiple audience screens because we really just needed one audience screen but we just needed to split them up to two TVs and this was kind of the cheapest way to do that. So if we have any other displays that we want to run to, then we have that ability, but we really don't need control of multiple different uh, audience screens in ProPresenter at this moment. So we went with the cheapest option, which is just buying a splitter, splitting those two up. All right, man, look at him concentrating over here. So serious, <laughs> trying to get this done. The other thing we actually have going on with this computer too is that we got this little box right here and we're gonna run light key from it. Uh, we just found out we actually have to pay for it. We thought we were gonna maybe be able to get, the, get away with the free version because we only have a couple lights up there, but we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to pay for light key. <laughs> so that's running off of this computer as well. So we're running a lot of things off of this, just this one computer. And another thing too that I'm pretty excited about, um, it's not quite related to ProPresenter, but I'm gonna be leading um, for the first couple of weeks uh, on my guitar. But I have my laptop here with main stage and I have a couple pads synced to this. So I can just hit this and I can have, I can have an ambient pad uh, connected to this knob right here. Any key that I'm in, I can have a pad behind me uh, while I'm playing guitar. So that's kind of nice, just to kind of fill up the space a little bit more. So Chris is our resident light key expert. I actually don't do much with light key. I just let Chris handle it all. And I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, work those lights. Another thing about this setup that I kind of like, I actually just watched a video talking about this uh, from the guys at Churchfront, and they were talking about their stage screen design, and uh, I kind of copied off of them because I really liked it. Um, so that's what this is right here. And I have my chords at reference and lyrics for reference, song sections labeled, all of that. Um, really cool layout. 
and uh, I really like it. I'm excited to look at the back screen and, and see that um, when I play and when I lead. So if you're looking for stage screen design ideas um, or layout ideas, uh, definitely check that video out. I'll link it below um, because it was really helpful and I really like some of the things they were doing in there. So be sure to check that out if you're interested in that. Just finished wrapping up a couple final touches on some of this pro presenter stuff adding a couple uh, actions to a couple of the slides switching around between a couple different um, stage displays which is pretty cool i've made a couple different presets here as i can show you this is the first one for worship and then i have a cue um, action rather that triggers um, the this which will just be the bumper video so when the bumper video goes um, the video will play on the stage display as well. And then this will just be a slide preview so that the pastor can see his slides as he's talking. But at the same time, he'll still have his countdown clock and the time and everything like that. So that's kind of how we're setting this stage display. But anyway, here's what this pro presenter setup actually looks like when it's all uh, put together. We got our CalDigit Thunderbolt dock here. We have the Blackmagic monitor back there. Um, light key, the light key box coming in and then SDI splitter. Uh, a little bit of mess of cables there. We will make this a little bit neater um, some point down the road, um, but right now that's what it looks like. But anyway, this is our ProPresenter setup. All right, so let's finish this video off with doing a little number crunching. I have right here with me um, the cost of what we just looked at, the setup that I recommend versus uh, the PCIe chassis route and everything that that entails. So basically with the functionality that you get with the CalDigit and the Ultra Studio monitor and things like that, um, this would be the PCIe option that would give you all of those same things. So this is including USB ports. This is including a Cat5 Ethernet port. Um, and then of course, um, the SDI video out with the HyperDeck versus um, just the Blackmagic Ultra Studio monitor. So both of these options are giving you basically the same functionality in a nutshell. But this PCIe chassis option does not allow for things like SD cards or headphone jacks, things like that. So in some ways, the setup that I actually have laid out here can kind of give you more options. So if you need to plug an SD card in, you can do that. If you need headphone jacks, an additional headphone jack for some reason, I guess you could do that. Um, there's already a headphone jack on the laptop, but you know, if you need it, it's there. All right, so first off, the laptop is gonna be $1,000, so let's get that out of the way. So for the setup that I just broke down, we have the Blackmagic Ultra Studio Monitor, $115, Thunderbolt 3 cable, $31, CalDigit Thunderbolt Dock, $280, uh, Blackmagic SDI Splitter, $195, SDI cable, $10. So you're looking at a total of $631 dollars there so now for the pcie option you have a chassis that's going to be 500 dollars black magic deck link duo 495 the sonnet presto solo which is going to be the ethernet card 130 dollars and then the sonnet allegro usb card is 50 dollars so all of that total together is 1175 dollars so it's going to be close to double the cost. Now, obviously there are gonna be some benefits to going that route than the route that I laid out here. Now, is it worth it? 
um, it depends on you. Do I think that it's worth double the price if you're on a tight budget? No, I think it's obviously better to go with the route that I laid out for you in this video. But I mean, of course, if you have more than $2,000 to throw at a ProPresenter 7 setup, then by all means, uh, go for it. I think it's a, obviously it's a more professional setup and it's gonna be less cables, you know what I mean? It's just the one cable attaching the uh, PCIe chassis to the computer and that's it and that covers power and that covers sending all the outputs to ProPresenter and things like that so obviously that's a more simplistic setup but it's going to cost you like I said almost double uh, to go that route so that right there is why I came up with this option um, to save some money and also be just as effective at the same time so with that being said I hope that makes sense I hope that helps break down things for you I hope that helps you make some decisions on how to set your ProPresenter 7 setup uh, in the best way possible for you and your budget and your church and everything like that and that's why I think the setup that I outlined in this video is the best and most affordable overall setup for ProPresenter in 2021 and maybe beyond. So with that being said, I hope you found this video helpful. And if you're already running ProPresenter 7 and you have a setup that you like, uh, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you're using. I love to see what other people are using, how they've set these things up uh, to work best for them and their church. If you've made it this far in the video, I appreciate it. And if you're looking to get started with ProPresenter or you're looking to upgrade to ProPresenter 7, well, I am in the process of finishing a ProPresenter quick start guide that is specifically made for churches getting up and running with ProPresenter 7 fast. Uh, if you're used to ProPresenter 6 or one of the previous versions of ProPresenter, uh, it's vastly different. The user interface uh, is very different than previous iterations and it can be a little bit daunting and confusing to get in there and get used to where everything's at and getting used to the functionality of it. But once you do, I think ProPresenter 7 is one of the best presentation softwares out there. And in fact, I love it a lot more than ProPresenter 6. Um, I think the updates that they made to it are great. It just takes a little bit of getting used to. This is why I created the ProPresenter 7 Quick Start Guide. So you can cut your learning time down and get started fast making amazing presentations for your church with ProPresenter 7. In this course, I'll break down all of the essential stuff for ProPresenter, like the new UI and things like that. And I'll also go into some detail about, you know, things I talked about in this video about making stage displays and things like that in more detail. Um, so that you can follow that piece by piece and be able to replicate uh, some of the stuff that we've been doing here and uh, other churches are doing as well when it comes to actions and stage displays and custom layouts. These things really add to your presentations and help take them to the next level. So if you're interested in that and you want to get the material before anyone else gets a hold of it, there is a pre-order link down in the description below for you to check out. Anyway, with that being said, thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video. But I just want to look at Chris's coffee here. Fantastic. First off, it's huge. <laughs> second off, second off the sprinkles. The sprinkles and then like what? the caramel, all all the they've never put sprinkles in before. Yeah. First all right. I don't know if anyone else has had these. We kind of got these on a whim, just walking into the store. Um, but I tried this. This is so weird. Hmm. I'm not sure about that. It's weird because that's exactly what I would expect, but it's like not what you want. That's <laughs> weird.